So guess what? What? This is episode. Uh, nope. Never mind. <laughs> All right. I was gonna say this is episode fifty-two, which means it's our year episode. But no, nope, that's wrong. Mm. It's fifty-four weeks in a year. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know shit. Can you fact check that, Robin Couch? Googling right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know shit. Fifty-four. It should be. Damn! If it's been a year, that's time goes by fast. No, it's 52. Holy oh, shit! This is a whole year! Wow! Dudes behind the food is a year old! Hey, listen, I'll tell you this, man. One of the funniest podcasts out there. Uh, you know what? The funniest podcast out there! In your fucking face! <laughs> Cheers, dog! What the Cheers, fuck? Man. You're doing this shit for a year! A whole damn... Time goes by so... Fast. It really, really does, dog. Wow, racist. <laughs> wow. Wow. Can, look, to blow your mind a little bit, bro. Yes, this shit is a year old, but fucking 2022 is already in November, dog. By the time this shit drops, bro, we're in November. This shit's almost over. <sighs> this year went by so fast. And you know what? I still feel like God owes me three years because of COVID. <laughs> I, want, I want those fucking years back. Well, I don't. Um, and you know what? You're, you're kind of not allowed to say this, but I feel like it's been long enough now. I had a great COVID, you know? I had a great- Oh, like, you're, you're allowed to say that. That's fine. Yeah. Some I people just, enjoyed it. It was, you know, it, like during, when it was happening, it was kind of like you really weren't allowed to say like, hey, this quarantine's going great for me because it was like, people are dying. People are, businesses are closing down, right? But yeah. for me to be able to be at home with my wife, bus loads- <laughs> make a baby and then not have to deal with the obligations of traveling and shooting all the time and to just be home with my pregnant wife and nurture her and comfort her and you know and take care of her without any outside obligations was like perfect you know i swung on a swing and i <laughs> stared off into the distance every day i contemplated life that's what i was doing uh, and what did you learn I learned that I'm the biggest piece of shit <laughs> ever. Uh, oh, I, I could have told you that. You okay. didn't need COVID for that, okay. dog. Well, <laughs> well, this is where the, our, our podcast ends, <laughs> a whole year in. But it was like one of those things like during pandemic where I uh, I got to kind of evaluate a lot of the things that were important to me mm. and the things that I, I was kind of forcing myself to do because I felt obligated to do it. Mm. And the pandemic was like, hey, you actually don't really care about these things that much. It put things into perspective. Yeah. You're like, what am I doing this for if it doesn't bring me joy? Exactly. So I was like, oh, you know what I want to do? I want to open up a store mm -hmm. and boom, look what happened. Bang. I, yeah. A lot of people didn't get it either. Cause you know, you know, you're kind of riding this hype train of being an act in acting and in booking the stuff. And mm -hmm. they're like, you should continue to do more acting. But I'm like, but as of right now, doesn't make me happy. Mm. What made me happy was trying to build this fucking business. And it's been a pain in the ass, mm -hmm. but I like Joe, me and Joe were talking about this. He goes, I think you like being in uncomfortable situations because it makes you work harder. Word. So like opening the store, something new, don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And, you know, Joe, too, this is so new for him, too. And he's running mo mostly everything. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been some growing processes. But I like being uncomfortable. I like being challenged. Yeah, shit. man. I mean, that's how you grow, right? That's how you grow. And look, not going to lie, bro. Speaking of businesses, I mean, look, we didn't want to talk about this when it was happening. But as far as goody. Pandemic was our best year ever. A lot of clothing brands grew yeah. over this time. Like even though people were going through like financial stress, I think a lot of people uh, just wanted to have things. Yeah. As far as like an independent business, the fact that people were just home, like buying shit. A lot of people built uh, independent businesses during pandemic. Yeah, Smart bro. shit. It was, it was kind of crazy. It, it kind of, you know, I think it really helped us see what sold better and really kind of helped us come into our own as a clothing brand, to be honest. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because like the shit that sold the best was... When we we put out these masks that said back up and we were like, we kind of decided to, and we when those popped off, we were like, oh, you know what? We're actually funny. Let's lean more into the fu our, the shit we come up with, you know, as kind of part of the brand. And it really kind of helped us, you know, develop, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, hey, cheers to that, dude. But it's great to be traveling again. And I'll tell you what, I did a lot of traveling. Cheers to you. Cheers to a year. 
a whole ass year. Cheers to another way to bring in the big bucks because that's all we care about, you know? I wish I did. I wouldn't <laughs> be going through so many financial issues if I didn't open this goddamn store. <laughs> I tell you, every time Studio 71 sends me my Studio 71 check and I'm like, oh, this is a good check. And I'm like, ah, damn it. I got to break David off with a podcast. God <laughs> damn it. Like, shit. And then I always tell him right when he gives me the check, I'm like, cool, that's going to go into the business. <laughs> <laughs> it just disappears from me instantly. <laughs> uh, I really recently dog did a shitload of traveling and I'll tell you why specifically Canadian Thanksgiving was in October right and me and Chia had already booked our flights to Regina Saskatchewan for Thanksgiving Saskatchewan. and to fly there it, there's no straight flight because it's a smaller city so you got to go through Calgary connecting Calgary fly to Regina right so it takes all day right because you go like three hours to Calgary Calgary, you have like a two, three hour layover and then like another hour and some change to Regina hour or two, whatever, right? So we were ready to go. And then I got a last minute thing from my agent. She was like, yo, we got a bag for you. Go to Austin, Texas, drive these slingshots around. You seen the slingshots? Slingshots are those like three wheeled vehicles with the the top off. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And um, she's like, go make a video with them. And it's a nice little bag. And not only that, it was like, you know, you get to go to this huge music festival in Texas for free, VIP, this and that. I'm like, well, it's lit, right? But it was the exact same weekend as Canadian Thanksgiving, right? I would have, it was like Friday and Saturday is the shit I needed to go to. And then Sunday was Canadian Thanksgiving. And the way the flights are set up, I'm like, how am I going to do both of these at once, right? And I'm like, I do not want to miss Thanksgiving. And also, I don't want to miss this bag, right? So, in order to make it work, bro, here's what the fuck I had to do. Because, you know, you automatically, you automatically think, okay, Chia flies to Canada with the baby and I just fly to Texas, right? But flying with a baby is a bitch, bro, okay? It's a very difficult process, all right? And also, when is this coming out? This is coming out in November after Halloween. So, okay, and yes, as I have announced already on YouTube, Chia is pregnant, okay? She's four months pregnant, right? So... I, she's like, I do not want to fly by myself, pregnant with Veda and all this bullshit, right, that we had to carry. So what we did was I flew with them to Calgary and then I booked myself the latest flight out of Calgary so that I could walk Chia and with all our shit to her terminal. She flies to Regina. And then for me to get to Austin, Texas on time, I had to do a red eye from Calgary to Toronto. Landed in Toronto at 6 a.m. This is not worth it. I flew from Toronto at 7 a.m. to get in Austin, Texas at 9 to 10 a.m. This is crazy. Went through that day of activities, stayed the night in Austin, Texas, did my Saturday activities, skipped the music festival, mm -hmm. flew out of Austin, Texas at like 7 p.m. to Toronto. Yes. Stayed in Toronto that night, left Toronto at 6 a.m. to fly to Regina, Saskatchewan, to get there at 10 a.m. for Thanksgiving activities. Woo! You, my friend, are a family man. <laughs> this is my plan. This is what would have happened. <laughs> I have a wife who I very much love. Yeah. This beautiful, beautiful daughter. And they go, listen, there's this bag I have to get. Mm -hmm. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have left. Look, <clears throat> if there was a way for me to make it work, I was going to make it work. And we made it work. It was a lot, but... For two things, I feel like I'm a good flyer. I'm tiny. I get comfortable. And I'm also, I'm, I'm a good flight sleeper. So I had no issues, right? I knew I wasn't going to be tired when I got to Texas. And also, fortunately enough for me, in Calgary, I found a lounge that, uh, like, one of those nicer lounges that had a shower. That oh. It was only, like, 40 bucks to get into. Fucking, a lot of people don't realize this. Sometimes lounges, you don't have to have the first class shit. You Just can pay for Sometimes it. you can pay your way in there. It was only 40 bucks. It was free food, free alcohol, shower. I literally... Took a long shit, shower, jacked off in that shower, brushed my teeth. I fucking had a whole thing. I was Sir, <laughs> your time is up. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> it's been too long, eh? <laughs> I said, no. I will jerk off in here for as long as I want. I paid $40. You're also very loud in there, too. <laughs> 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 Sir, you don't need to tell us. Just do it in silence, please. I'm like, no, no, I do need to tell you. <laughs> I'm 
coming! <laughs> so I had a great layover, you know what I'm saying? And um, and we got it done, got the bag, and, uh, you know, had a great time in Thanksgiving. Let me tell you something, dog. Veda loves Chia's dad so much, I get very jealous. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. It's all, she, she only wants to be held by him and hang out with him, and I'm like, fine. <laughs> Go then. Right when you came to the daddy's here, she goes, who are you? <laughs> and runs over to her real dad, her <laughs> grandfather. <laughs> she goes, you went to Texas to ride little cars. You stupid idiot. How was your Hawaii trip, bro? Hawaii is, because I'm there to open a store and then we're training staff, it's mm -hmm. a different vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're not there to have fun. I touched the water twice there. That's mm. about it. And it was for like 30 minutes and then like an hour. So. Wow. You know, it, it's different, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, once the store opens up, it's going to be good. And here's the thing. I, no matter, even I'm in entertainment and this is like a very like precarious thing to be in. Like you don't know when your checks are coming. Mm -hmm. I, I still, I, I think about my future a lot. So in terms of not so much me, I could live in uncertainty for the rest of my life. I actually like that shit. Mm -hmm. I like not knowing when things are going to happen. It keeps me, makes me motivated. <laughs> it keeps you on your toes. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, oh shit. <laughs> And I broke. Oh, yeah. goddamn! <laughs> and that's happened to me a couple of times, dude. Where when I when I originally was losing weight, I actually decided not to do YouTube for almost a year, mm. and I only did like four, maybe like a few videos here and there. And mm. so there's a stint in time where my subscribers drop, mm. and that's when my view views died mm. because I decided that I wanted to like, you know what? I need to figure out why the fuck I'm so fucking unhealthy. Uh. So all I did was just study about food, what it does to me. I went through therapy. I did all this other shit. Mm. I lost like 90 pounds. Mm -hmm. I got healthier, but my views dropped and then my paychecks were gone. I remember I saw my paychecks and I was, I saw my bank account and I was like, oh, I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that shit lit a fire under my ass. Right. And then immediately the bank account went all the way up yeah, yeah, because yeah. I started hustling hard, hard, yeah. hard. So, you know, I, I definitely like being in these weird situations and, you know, going to Hawaii and opening up this business. It's I'm in that situation now. So and when does it open? Uh, so hopefully when this comes out, it should already be open been by then like our grand opening should already happen Damn. so soft opening as of right now should be in about a week hopefully if things are on track oh, shit. and we've been going through a lot of pain because you know hawaii be different yeah you know i mm. think like it's hard opening up a business there mm. i didn't know this mm. uh love the place but it's different you know mm. what i mean so i'm just praying it works out because you know going back to what i was talking about because i don't want my wife to be living in uncertainty i mm. want something that has consistent money coming through mm. so she doesn't have to worry so uh, for her, she works great. She makes good money. I need to make sure that I have something along the lines where she's not worried about me. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Because uh, otherwise it's like, why is she with you? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you just unveiled my darkest fear. <laughs> Thank you so very much. <laughs> when is, uh, so we might be doing a uh, When Foodie Calls in Hawaii. Um, very excited about that. And when we go, because you've never been to a strip club. And I've never, according to Nikki Blades, strip clubs in Hawaii are super fun because here's the thing. Strip clubs out here, the fully nude ones are not allowed to serve alcohol. The ones in Hawaii are allowed to serve alcohol. I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> like, you just, you, okay, here's what you do. <laughs> I feel like this is what's going to happen. Girl's going to come up. She's going to be like, hey, daddy, and just fucking gyrate. I'll be like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. Thank okay, you. Okay, so it's, it's less weird. It's, um, okay, so you, you know, you go in, of course. You watch a girl dancing on stage and she proceeds to, you know, kind of get naked through the couple songs, right? Wow. Um, and then, no, so here's what you can do. You can totally just sit at your table and fucking watch. That's great. But while you're watching it, just like that, like a little fucking meerkat in the wild. <laughs> but, <laughs> but while you're doing that, what will usually happen, different dancers will come up to you making conversation with you, being sweet with you, flirty, flirting with you because they want you to uh, purchase a lap dance. So be like, hey, where are you from? How much do those cost? Depending. Um, I've been to strip clubs where it's like uh, $20 for topless, $40 for fully nude. Um, some will be like, we got a three song special if you do it right now for $50. Oh, you can run out of money fast. Super fast. Wow. Um, sometimes they'll be like, if it's a slow night, they'll be like, we got $5 lap dance specials right now. You know what I'm this saying? This is crazy. Let me ask you something. Yeah. What do you do about your Bonaire? You let it ride. 
and it's okay. Yeah, it's acceptable. I, feel, I almost feel like it's it's a, a goal of theirs to get you erect, yeah. Well, I'm just going to be sitting there, I would feel <laughs> You will never. Well, I think, let's say Chia gives me the go-ahead to take you to a strip club. I think she will be like, no lap dances. <laughs> I definitely, uh, th- listen, let me tell you something, ladies. If I'm drunk, this thing ain't going up. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't going up at all. I get whiskey dick so fast. Yeah, yeah. Like whenever, when I was young and I wanted to hook up, I would make sure not to drink too much. Because yeah. the first time I ever experienced whiskey dick, it traumatized me. I've I'm been like, there. And I didn't know what that was. And a homie had to tell me. He was mm-hmm. like, yo, when you drink, that's called whiskey dick. It's fucked up. I was like, so I didn't drink whiskey. <laughs> that's I not, know. That's not what that means. It's when you're drunk, for, the blood flow won't go there. Yeah. I was like, oh. But I never understood how people get drunk and they smash because my shit would just be incapacitated. I, um, I... You know, it was hit or miss for me. Like back in my 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 whore days, it was like either the whiskey dig hit me and we were just, you know, sad uh, or she had it in her heart to fellace me back to life and we would uh, continue like that. Or sometimes, bro, the fucking, I don't know, testosterone would combine just right with the alcohol and I was just a... It was, I just remember just going beast mode. You know what I'm saying? Like blurry beast mode. <laughs> not me. I'm like, oh, I can't do it. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's not going to happen. You know, it, you know it's, it's, it's hit or miss, you know? Um, but like, yeah, I've been there too where it's like. Because uh, yeah. I feel like most guys are like, oh, I don't want to drink in case I make a mistake. I'm like, I drink. So I won't make a mistake. It's impossible. It's physically impossible. <laughs> it just won't happen. Right, right. It's like, like your insurance policy. Like I literally one time, like uh, I went to a hotel with a girl and then we were going to hook up. Couldn't get, this is the first time it ever happened. Mm. And then I, like, I didn't know what was going on. And then afterwards, like in the middle of the night when we were sleeping, that's when I started putting on some moves mm. and then it was working because I sobered up. Yeah. But while I was drunk, it wouldn't fucking work. I, yeah. thought, I thought I was, I thought I had to go to the hospital. It, look, man, it, the first time... I'm an innocent child. I didn't know these things. Your first time softening, going soft on a girl was definitely a traumatic experience for everybody, and we're going to drink each other off and be right back. <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. For those of you out there that aren't focusing on your mental health, what are you doing? Going to the gym helps get that body tight, but it doesn't always help out your mentals. They can work in conjunction. If you're working on your physical health, you should be working on your mental health all day. If my mind is sound, so is the rest of my life. And I got to tell you something, I've been doing better help for years. Whenever I'm stressed out, whenever my lady is pissing me off, I talk to my counselor, Fred. I go, Fred, bitches sometimes be bitches. And he's like, you know what, dude? Let's unpack that. And we unpack my personal trauma and I feel free freaking great. My friends, therapy is for everybody and therapy is for you. Just ask Kermit the Frog. What do you think, Kermit? Well, I, uh, sometimes I just, it's a lot of pressure on me, you know, and, um, you know, Miss Piggy, she doesn't really give you, uh, she doesn't really listen to me. So I, I just need someone to talk to and, um, and so that's why I, I like therapy, you know? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Kermit, all you need to do is get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash foods. That's better help as an H E L P.com slash foods. Hi, I'm Kevin Hart, and sometimes I'm so busy, I don't have time to cook home-cooked meals. <laughs> That's why I like DoorDash, all right? Look, have you ever pulled into the driveway after a trip to the grocery store, only realized, hmm, yo, never mind, it's Tim. Have you ever pulled into the driveway after a trip to the grocery store, only to realize you forgot one key ingredient for dinner? Now you have options. Get the groceries you need or a backup meal from your favorite local restaurant delivered with DoorDash, Okay. Every time you place an order for pickup or delivery, you're setting off a chain reaction that helps give back to the people who make your neighborhood unique. With DoorDash, you're not just getting the things you love, but supporting the community you love too. I order DoorDash all the time. I'm so busy with the baby that we don't have time to cook, so that's why DoorDash is lit, okay? For a limited time, our listeners can get 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter code DUDES. That's 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code DUDES. One more time, don't forget, that's code DUDES for 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. Uh, it's it's tough times, you know. It's different, man. You yeah. know, it's, 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 it's moving. It's very weird when you move different and you have conversations with women when you're not oh, uh, single anymore. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking different. You know, um, like I said, like we've said, um, it's always, you know, sex is always better when you can, when you're grown and you can communicate, discuss your insecurities and different situations. <laughs> I'm afraid of the dark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fear of abandonment. Let's have sex. Yes. <laughs> I don't like clowns. <laughs> <laughs> queen, 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 queen. <laughs> oh, do you have any? Oh, besides heights, I know you have a super fear I'm of heights. Of clowns. You're scared of clowns too? Yeah. Oh, um, shit. Ever since I was a kid, uh, if, if you guys know, before the... Uh, Pennywise, the yeah. new one, yeah, yeah. the original one scared the living fucking shit out of me. I've never seen it. Maybe that's why I don't have a fear of clowns. So uh, I remember when I first watched it, it was at my cousin's house <laughs> and they fucking traumatized me for the rest of my life. Oh, man. So that first month, I would wake up in a cold sweat because <laughs> I would feel I couldn't. You have any idea how hard, how hard it is to shampoo with your eyes open? <laughs> That shit. That's hilarious. That shit hurt. So I still remember the pain. Yeah. Because there was a scene where he came out of a sink. Oh, God. And so there's a shower drain there. All and right. I'm like in third grade. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. screaming, not because I'm scared. It's because the shampoo hurt my eyes. Oh, so man. Like, ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would shampoo with my eyes open because I was so fucking scared. I would take these quick ass showers. Damn. And then I remember one time uh, I had a dream that he was coming under the bed to grab me. Mm. And so... I was in bed and I woke up and I was so scared. I fucking jumped out of bed as fast as possible to run into the bed with my parents mm. and they locked the door. What? So I was like, da, 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 ah, ah. and so my parents didn't wake up. And so I ran back and I jumped into the bed and I covered myself up. Damn. And so at this time I was still scared of the dark as a kid, super scared. And so the old, how I got over being scared of the dark and I remember this for the rest of my life. Yeah. I used to do this thing where I'm like cover myself in a blanket and I would just have a little breathing hole. Because <laughs> it was so hot hmm. And then one day So hot in Sacramento I just said fuck it I threw the blanket off If you're gonna kill me Just fucking kill me <laughs> Take me And I threw it off And I woke up And I was fine Yeah like, you were oh, good I didn't die Oh this is bullshit Do you ever feel like Your parents locked the door Because your dad was Fucking your mom <laughs> You could have been killed by, I by a do now, <laughs> and I didn't think about it then. You could have been, you could have been being like chased by a murder clown, and your dad was fucking your mom, dude. So your dad's a pastor, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, your dad was fucking your mom. So did you, did you go to um? Did you like go into haunted house? Ruined that shit? memory for me. <laughs> It was already ruined. You're uh, being chased by a killer clown. Yeah, but I know they're having sex. <laughs> and that's why they didn't want to save their child. Because that was immediately, as a father, that was my first thought. Like, because I'm thinking like, oh, I don't want locked doors. Like, you know, I, one thing I started not like now, ever since I moved in with Chia, I don't lock the doors when I shit. Because she was like, babe, don't lock the door. What if I have an emergency? So now when I shit, I don't lock the doors. So immediately when you said that, I was like, oh, I wonder why they would lock their doors. Like, oh, they were probably having sex. Smashing. Yeah. Ugh. Disgusting. <laughs> Fucking gross, dude. <laughs> Your dad was like being smashed and you're like, <laughs> he's like, no, no, they ignore him. <laughs> he just covers my mom's mouth. <laughs> he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, do you go to haunted houses and shit like that? Did you ever like that? I did not like haunted houses. Mm -hmm. I didn't like any of that shit. So there's just a place out in NorCal. It's like a haunted mansion that everybody goes to. Hmm. And everybody wanted to do that mm -hmm. shit, man. And I didn't like it. I was, When I went to Six Flags, uh, they have like the... Not scary, not scary farm. No, no, Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. not scary farm is what I went to. Okay, okay, In okay, college. Yeah. And I got in trouble because I socked one of the workers in the face. Dude, that's so crazy that you tell me that story because I went with a homie in high school who also socked an employee in the face. Well, here's the thing. The <laughs> fucked up thing is I've never been to Knott's Berry Farm. So nobody <laughs> told me about this shit because if I knew that there were workers doing that shit, I thought it was somebody trying to fuck with me. Oh, oh so you weren't even in a maze. This was just out in the in the park. Yeah. And then all of a sudden someone went, what? And I went, what the fuck? I went, blah. Then I put somebody in the face. Wow. And they're like, yo, what the fuck? And I was like, hey, what's going on? They're like, they're workers. Dog, I apologize. I was like, bro, they didn't fucking tell me. I didn't know that this is what you guys do. Mm -hmm. And he was was so pissed at me. And you didn't get kicked out? 
No, they didn't kick me out. Oh, I my boy got through. escorted out of the park. Yeah. Well, I I I, I was like apologizing because I felt so terrible, you yeah, know. Yeah. And I got mad at my friends because they didn't fucking let me know. Right. I was like, y'all should have let me know because yeah. I thought this dude was trying to fuck with me. <laughs> Ugh. I um look, I, I I'm not like. Yo, I need to go to a haunted house, but I've always enjoyed going because I like how fucking um, innovative they are with how they scare you. For example, one time, bro, I remember walking through one of these mazes and all the ghouls and goblins were behind these bars. They were like in little like jail cells. And I, I remember being like, oh, okay, I can I can take a breath and relax because they're behind these bars and no one's going to fucking come at me, right? And as I'm walking by, the bars stretched out. <laughs> so this fool's like, Rrr! I was like, oh, shit. And then I was like, wow, this is so fucking creative, right? And I remember one, another one where I felt like I could finally relax. I got to the end of the whole maze after all these fucking little monsters are jumping out at me. At the end of it was a huge black curtain, right? I'm like, cool. I'm at the end. Thank God. I did a sigh of relief. Tell me why the whole curtain moved at me at feet and arms. I was like, oh! It was crazy. Stop. The last time we got scared like that was when we did the, um, uh, what's it called? When Foodie Calls. It was the first new one where we did the, uh, the, the escape room. Oh, the escape room. And they kept scaring me. Right. That shit was fucking frightening as hell. People still, I still laugh at this one part where you we open the door and there's supposed to be another door in there. And I thought we were supposed to go in it like as an elevator. <laughs> that shit still makes me cry <laughs> laughing because of how fucking dumb I am. That's as dumb as it gets, dude. We're so funny and dumb. We're so stupid. We're so great. That guy hated us so bad. No, he loved us, dog. <laughs> I bet you he was thinking, like, you guys are idiots. Yeah, they shut down that shit for us. Oh, I thought they say shut down in toilet. That was no, like one- no, no, no. If you guys uh, haven't seen that episode, me and David go to an escape room. It was when I was first like, let's do a new show while we wait on Thrillist. One of the <laughs> funniest, funniest episodes you guys will ever watch. It was <laughs> so hilarious. Dude. Especially since we just couldn't figure shit out. <laughs> We're so bad. <laughs> We're so bad at everything. I went into it thinking, I'm going to kill this shit. I'm very logical. I like figuring shit out. I'm going to kill it. But it was like, escape rooms are different, bro. Like, you really got to like, ugh. It's a lot of pressure. And we're so lazy. Yep. I feel like. That's the thing, too. We're like, ugh, it's not here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, this guy in the back's like, dude, try a little harder. <laughs> the guy's like, maybe you want to just look at the doorknob. We're like, you know what you're talking about, dude. <laughs> He's giving us the actual clue. <laughs> it's the doorknob. Whatever, <laughs> you fucking idiot. Oh, speaking of me figuring shit out, dog, you know how you're always kind of like weirded out by how good I am in Jeopardy? Yes, I hate it. I just realized a big reason why the other day. I was at Costco with Chia and Veda, and we're in the little book section trying to find something for, for Chia, right? And I came across these little, these, okay, it's like these long things and they're kind of like thick ass pamphlet books and they're called Brain Quest or some shit. And it's literally just pages and pages of trivia. And my dad used to buy one of those for me every time we went to Costco for every and it's like ages 10 to 11 and he would get them for me and it has trivia that matches up with like your age mm-hmm. and I would always read those and go over them. And I think that's a big reason why I just know a bunch of trivial bullshit that makes me good at Jeopardy. You're a man of useless knowledge, man. Yeah. It's just the oddest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's true. We'll just be chilling at his house and all of a sudden he goes like, ah, Mesopotamia. And I'm like, (laughs) why do you know that? There's no reason for you to fucking know that at all. That's the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. I, uh, let me tell you the other night when I texted you randomly and I was like, I'm killing Jeopardy right now. I was fucking killing that shit, dog. Not just, not just celebrity Jeopardy, dog. It was real Jeopardy. And I was like, I'm fucking, if I was on on this shit, ooh, I would be killing it. What? Uh, they still do uh, Celebrity Jeopardy, right? They brought it back. Dude, it was gone for a long hey, time. Bring him on. You will be so surprised how fucking oh, good he is. Let me tell you my dream. It would be my dream. <laughs> it would be my dream. Because, like, Celebrity Jeopardy is kind of like, they Gardu. go it lighter. It's a little easier. Um, So, uh, I feel like, oh, I, look, fuck the Academy Award anymore. I just want to get to a point where I'm famous enough to go on Celebrity Jeopardy. <laughs> Dude, you know what's interesting? Mm. <laughs> you know, we, the, we put that clip out that went fucking viral. It was us imitating each other's cultures. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I forgot how fucking hilarious that was. Mm-hmm. And it was so funny. Some people were like very small. A handful. Uh, like barely a handful. Yeah. But 
You know why it bothered me? Mm. Somebody said this, and I got upset. A handful of people were offended. That's what we're saying. I got upset because they were wrong. They were like, uh, Tim's accent doesn't even sound Korean. It sounds Chinese. I was no, like, no, they said Japanese. Yeah, Jap. I was yeah. like, no, it doesn't. And uh, <laughs> second of all, and they were like, that's not even how Thai sounds. Like, that's 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 Vietnamese. I'm like, that doesn't sound like Vietnamese at all. Yes, I was, look, I was also kind of curious, confused by that. Because yeah. Because... As a Thai person, I think I think it was easy to to be a little like, if you wanted to, be offended by that. But it did sound Thai to me because I heard when you did your impression, I thought I heard a couple Thai words. <laughs> and let me tell you something. The reason why I know that's an accurate Thai fucking impression <laughs> is because I watch Muay Thai all the time. And I just watch <laughs> in their interviews when they talk in Thai. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like. It's actually a very difficult accent to do. Right, right. But the biggest difference between Thai and like a lot of South, they roll their R's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? And, and, and the, the inflection is very interesting. So yeah, yeah, like yeah. I legit studied it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I wanted to imitate it, like, like maybe in stand-up or something. <laughs> and so when somebody said that sounds Vietnamese, I was like, you're racist because it sounds nothing like Vietnamese. No, Vietnamese is so different. Yeah. like And also, I know a lot of Vietnamese words. I would just speak Vietnamese. Mm-hmm. Like So the idea that you thought that that sounds Vietnamese means that you're dumb. You don't know the difference the, the difference in Southeast Asian languages. Ooh. I was like, you're fucking racist because you think that Thai sounds like Vietnamese and it sounds nothing alike. Yeah, motherfucker. Kang kang bong. <laughs> Because when you said kakao boy, it sounded like <laughs> there was this thing my mommy called kakao mu. <laughs> and when you said muang, it sounded like you were saying mamuang, which is mango. Yeah. And at the end, when you were like mikan, it sounded like when someone's like sawadee so kan. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I, yeah. I thought I did a really good job. I thought it was pretty accurate. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, there's someone who speaks Thai. That's giving me the pass. And someone who speaks Korean that I'm saying, like, it does sound like Korean. And look, to be fair, okay, yes, um, I do, when I do a Japanese impression versus a Korean impression, it is kind of like, um, I do kind of do a similar uh, inflection, but um, when I, I, I made sure to throw in the because those are the Korean yeah, noises. That's super <laughs> Korean. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. J- Japanese, I don't, I can't speak Japanese. Yeah. Like I know a few because tr- I learned it for a few, <laughs> but it's more like. Uh, <laughs> I love your Japanese girl impression. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm erect. <laughs> <laughs> that was great and I'm drinking too so oh like Japanese almost like Korean but it's a little more staccato mm. right it's like that's great what is the now a couple of people commented this where like they said uh what would have been good for the Korean impression was the the comes nira it's a comes nira like what what is that when Korean uh, people do that you just add it at the end of the thing it's like comes nira means like thank you right oh, okay. but you don't use that in a lot of phrases like it's just ham nira like to, it's like an action interesting. Yeah. interesting so that's that's really about it but that okay. would be an actual Korean word so that's not you imitating the sound though right that's mm-hmm. you just speaking Korean at that point did you know uh, have I told you about how Thai people laugh through text. Have you this? No. Okay, so you know how, like, let's say when people speak Spanish, they put J-A instead yeah, of yeah, H-A yeah. because the J is silent in Spanish, yeah. or the J is an H noise, so it's ha-ha-ha-ha even when they put the J, right? Yeah. So Thai people, bro, they will put 55555, five, 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 the number five, because the Thai word for five is ha. What the fuck? That's yeah. wild. So Thai is nung song sam si ha. So when they laugh through text, they'll put five 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 five, which is ha 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 ha. That is amazing. <laughs> Korean people, it's the 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 letter kiok, which mm. is k- 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 oh, like a little kiki kiki. Yeah. So wow. Korean people laugh like black people. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. That's crazy. Yeah, so they'll call or like if they'll say like yes, they'll put an e on, which is ung. So mm. we'll be like, mm. so when you hear people like Korean people have a conversation with somebody, and uh, Mariel told me this where her um, coworkers were asking, it's like, how come when we say stuff, you go, mm, mm, mm. Mm. but that's how Korean people give confirmation that they're listening to you. So they go, oh, mm, 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 mm. Mm. so it's an e on. Yeah. Okay. What would you say is the Korean equivalent of a like a, when you get scared? Huh? Because okay. yeah. OMG. <laughs> because well, because oh you know like uh, Americans will be like ah right, mm-hmm. 
And uh, I think one time, Omo. Omo. And that means like, what? Like when you get shocked, you go, Omo. Oh, okay, okay. Because uh, one time my homie in, in high school scared me. And, uh, and, and instead of going, ah, I went, oh. And he was like, that's the most Asian shit I've ever heard you do. <laughs> <laughs> so Mariel, if you see any videos of me scaring her, yeah. she always gets scared in Japanese mm, for which, some fucking reason. Which is what? Uh, she'd be like, bikuri. Bikuri means like, uh, like you're scared, right? Mm. Like I got scared. So I go, bikuri style <laughs> And then I get super horny. <laughs> <laughs> you know what she does when she what? gets scared? She goes, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard her say that to me so many times. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Fuck off. Hey, what's the first thing you put on every morning? If you answered my existential dread, then we have some friends who can help with that, okay? Because I do wear me undies and they are very comfortable. I actually wear me undies boxers every night to sleep, David. So I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. Uh, they're so soft. Wow. So comfy. Wow. So nice on the tip of my dick. I love it so much. Okay. Uh -huh. Me Undies makes the softest fabrics you've ever put on your body so you can sit on your couch all day or go out and live your comfiest life or sit on Robin couch all day. Once you try their undies, <laughs> socks, bralettes, and loungewear, you'll never go back. Okay. <laughs> Plus, enjoy up to 30% off on virtually everything we make. Make free shipping and returns on every order, <laughs> early access to new launches, and exclusive members only sales. If you have a Me Undies membership, which is free to join, okay? Me Undies has a great offer for my listeners. For any first time purchasers, you get 20% off plus free shipping and returns, okay? One more time to get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to meundies.com slash dudes. That's meundies.com slash dudes. Told me to fuck off many times. It's kind of like her go-to. Yeah. You know? um, I was gonna say if you watched this last episode of When Foodie Calls, uh, I told you you said omo, and mm -hmm. I told you that the Thai equivalent of wow is a uh, oh ho. Oh ho. Yeah. Oh ho. That's, that's kind of cool though. I like that. Oh ho. It's like when Mario pulls down my pants. She goes oh ho. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then and then you pull down her panties and you're like oh ho. Oh. Are you um are you into like <laughs> being like disrespected when you guys are when you're getting freaky? Like have you ever like you know been like <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where this is going? Like, you know Your uh, penis is so small. <laughs> oh my god, it looks like a little tic tac. Well let me ask you okay, like okay, well before we go to that, like, you know, uh Getting tied up or tying somebody. Oh, I up. don't like being in a submissive position. Oh, at you all. don't like that at all. At fucking all. I don't like any of that shit. Like, mm. if, like I the one only one. I might may, may I have I told the story one time. This girl slapped me. <laughs> Stop. Uh, mm. I did just fucking dick went blink. Interesting. I don't like being in the position of being submitted. Mm. Don't like it at fucking all. I know people like that. Um, I um, I'm not a big fan of getting slapped. Uh, I don't mind slapping a girl though. Oh, slapping is great. Yeah, when a girl's in, into that, I'm definitely into that. Yeah, so when, when they want you to slap their ass. I mean, I feel like that's regular shit. I love that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I've definitely. <laughs> have you ever? <laughs> I remember one time this girl. I got into like choking a little bit mm -hmm. because of her, but the way not the way she wanted it though. She, this bitch wanted to black the fuck out. Oh, those are scary. And I just didn't feel comfortable right but i don't know what type of sex she had before mm. but i remember when i first did it she was like fucking choke me harder you bitch <laughs> and then i <laughs> i got soft i was like excuse me <laughs> like fuck it you, you could have just said that without the bitch <laughs> and then we could have continued but then she's like oh I'm sorry i just get super fucking into it but when you know when we had sex again we hooked up again she wanted me to like choke her harder and i just didn't know how much? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because she was a tiny little girl. Yeah. And my hands are big. So mm. I, I like, I remember to the point where she was like kind of gurgling a little bit. Oh, God. And I pulled back. She goes, no, 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 no. I like that shit. And mm. so I'm like, I don't, 
it's just too much to think about. That's like, a little scary. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't like that too much. I had a homie that was hooking up with this girl, and they used to fuck and beat the <laughs> shit out of each other, bro. Slap the shit out of each other. They they walk away from that shit with bruises and shit, right? No, I don't. Like and then so when they like. when he stopped hooking up with that girl, he was he was he had another girlfriend, and then but they had never done nothing like that, right? So. He, <laughs> He said, he told me this story. He said, one day he's like, dude, I just wanted to see, like, I just wanted to try it out, see if she might be down. So I just did like a light little, like, <laughs> while he was like mid thrust, just a little light little, like, and she went, no. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> dude, Gio's funniest story that she ever told was she asked Bart. You want some more tequila? A little bit, yes. Okay, Kirkland brand. Kirkland. So Gio told the story on JK News, and she told it on our podcast. Oh, I've seen asked, the clip. Yeah, Bart yeah, yeah. Just, And then he slapped her so hard, she started crying. <laughs> so oh, Bart, on the ass, though. Yeah. Like, Bart fucking unloaded on her ass. <laughs> I was like, yo, bro. Come on, dog. Read, read the room, dog. <laughs> and then she, she stopped. She was in so much shock, she started crying. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, dog, how fucking hard did you hit her? Ugh. I... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I remember, uh, I've, I've been there where I, I might have slapped a little too hard and the girl was like, yo, <laughs> relax, <laughs> you know, but it's hard to gauge. I'm also very heavy handed. I forget that, you know, um, I'm just, I'm, a, I have like very just like heavy bones. I feel. Have you ever slapped titty? So I've never done the titty slap. It is awesome. Really? I've it's seen it in, in pornography, but I have yet to do that. So girl, I was hooking up with. Love the titty slap. And it was a little weird, too, because I know titties get, like, sensitive. Right, right, right. But she liked the titty slap. Mm. And then for some, at first, I ain't gonna lie, giggled a little bit. <laughs> I giggled a little bit because I've never slapped a tit before right. in sex. Because I'm, 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 she's riding on top. I'm on the bottom. And then she was like, slap my titties. Yeah. And I'm like. She said it like that? Yeah, she goes, slap my titties. <laughs> this is the same girl that likes the, uh, the choking. The shit. choking, right. So I, first I was like. <laughs> like, like that. Yeah. And she goes, no, slap that shit harder. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I slapped them and then she, it fucking was turning her on. Wow. And I was like, I kind of like this, yeah. dude. I kind of like the titty slapping. It gets a little scary, man, because I, 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 I hooked up with this girl that used to be like, bite my nipples so I can come. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, dog. And it's scary because... It's such a sensitive area, too. And you're kind of like, hey. Ah. Yeah. Right? You got your fucking, like, I don't know, like you're trying to get the pee out of an edamame, like that consistency. Like just a little, ah, you're just grazing it, right? But she's like, no, hard, like while you're in it. Because that's- you tear that shit? That's I just... know. it's and, and look, and they never teared. I never bit a nipple off. But it, I would be in the middle of it like, holy shit, I feel like I'm biting this thing so hard, you know? And it was kind of like, in my head, you know, of course- you know, in your head, you're just like, okay, I just uh, hurry up and come so I can come, right? Yeah. But in your in my head, I'm like, oh god, is she okay? And and it was always fine, but it's 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 a little scary, you know. Titty sucking sometimes gets tiring. Let me tell you this, bro. Nikki Blades got into a little. She brought this up one time on No Chaser, and it was a whole debate in my in my Instagram comments because she said, and. There were other girls that co-signed this and other girls that called her crazy that prefer, she said she would prefer her titty getting like shaken, like jiggled over getting sucked. She was like, the sucking does nothing for me. That's a preference thing. Yeah, exactly. But that's, I had no idea that this was a thing that existed. And she was like, for her, it just like was like a pressure and a like. Like a, a just just a, a, a feeling over like the sucking, I guess, was just kind of like more for the guy, and uh, and we had one guest on, this girl named Amber Diamond, who w saw that clip of Nikki Blades and was like, "You said you like your titties shook," <laughs> and was like, just couldn't comprehend. It made no sense to her. <laughs> I definitely know girls who like to get their titty like fucking grab. Yeah, they hard. They like that fucking hard grab, especially like. I feel like this is all the same girl. 
because she liked everything rough. Right. You know what I mean, she liked it like getting it from the back and then you just being behind her and grabbing her fucking tits yeah, super hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of, honestly, this girl taught me a lot of shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I've never been with somebody who uh, was so open about their sexual communication. Mm. Right. Even to the point where this girl told me my, my fucking dick game was whack. And oh, then, it's that one. It was that one. Ah, yes. And, I remember this story. And I had to make an adjustment. She, she was so open about shit. But I'll tell you that though, because of her, I made so many adjustments mm -hmm. that uh, it was a good thing for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, people just had different preferences. Mm -hmm. That titty grabbing stuff, though, it puts me out of it. Because mm. it's such a weird thing to do, just to grab and just like shake a tit. Shaking a tit is definitely a weird thing to wrap your head around, you Cause know? Because no, you got to imagine, too, like, let's say, like, and I'm not sure women could probably talk about this, but her and then some other, one other girl kind of like the grab and the titty shaking thing. But typically what happens is for me anyways, from my personal experience is I'm on, they're on top, I'm, I'm on the bottom mm -hmm. and they're writing. And there's a motion when they're writing and then you have to shake a tit. It's a weird thing. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Cause they're doing this motion. You're doing this. Ah! <laughs> like, like you're like, I'm fucking trying to get a fucking stain out of a window. Right, 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 and right. And it's just a weird I don't know. I, I think the motion kind of fucks up for me. It takes it, me out of it. It's definitely an, an unnatural thing because, I mean, look, of course, majority of what you see before you start having sex is what you see in movies and porn or whatever. Mm. No one's shaking titties in porn and movies, you know? Yeah. No one's doing that. What so, is that? I don't know, man. You look, everybody's different. and you, you Robin only... Couch, what is that? Do you, do you like your titty to be shaken up like you're shaking up a protein shake? <laughs> what is your preference? I definitely am not a part of the camp that likes an aggressive shaking, okay. but a nice grab I wouldn't okay. be opposed to. Right. It's like it's in the middle. Like a shake would, I would kind of sit there and be like, what do you, what do you think is happening right now? Because we're not on the same page. Yeah. Right. And I also know girls who, who, did, who didn't, like their, their nipples aren't as sensitive. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, my experience was a little different because this girl had uh, breast augmentation, mm. and so she lost the sensation in her nipples. Mm. So for her, titty sucking does absolutely fucking nothing for her. Right. Because I, I don't know what happened in the operation because they went through the nipple to cut it to put the— uh, mm, It's just her nerves got a little— Got yeah. a little fucked up. So she feels nothing in her nipples, so right. she doesn't really care. But if a guy does suck on her tit, it, it's, it's more, like more for, for him for him to get him off. Yeah, so. and, I, and I've heard that from different girls, not even girls that— had like nerve damage, girls that were just like, hey, look, man, my nipples uh, just not, it's not doing it, you know? And I, you know, of course, there are girls that like literally you could suck on a nipple and, and they're jizz from that, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, everybody's different, you That's know? such an interesting thing. It's like, <laughs> it's like, what's up, Nikki? I'm just gonna slap her tit. Wow! <laughs> there you go! Don't do that. What are you, a, a girl in a Leonardo costume on Halloween? Just <laughs> slapping people's parts? <laughs> I'll be like, hey, consent? She goes, what? Wow! <laughs> just kidding, Nikki, but she would kill me. She's a giant. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Everybody's different, you know? Everybody's different. I, okay, in terms of the submissive conversation, um, I like the dominating aspect. Like, I've I've tied up, and um, I would be into... Tied up. Tied. So I did So I did I've tied up, and, you know... Uh, being submissive is also something that like I'm into. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, you could get tied up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I can't do that. dude. I mean, you know what? I think there's something just fun about like blindfolds and. No, I would just look like a fucking roast pork, <laughs> <laughs> like a little pork loin. Mm, see, now I'm drooling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't do that. I can't, I don't like being in the position where I'm like the one being, you know. Being like controlled. Not, yeah. I feel that. Well, where does that come from, David? So what is it about your childhood that keeps you feeling like you can't? It started when I was watching It the Clown and my parents would have let me in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you had no control over that situation. Yeah, at all. I don't like it. It doesn't turn me on. <laughs> and plus, honestly, dude, I don't like sex where it's like hyper complicated. <laughs> Yeah, they, they're like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna fucking wear this, and then you're gonna tie me up here, and then you're gonna blindfold me. We're gonna hit this. I'm like, this is so much work. You don't like outfits? No, because I wanna say I don't like it, but that outfit's coming off real fast. I am so into that. And like, I remember, bro. <laughs> I oh, okay. here's a good question. Though. Okay, okay. What's your favorite scenario, a sex scenario that you create? Ooh, very good. <laughs> Look, I like a lot of shit, you know? Um, favorite sex scenario? Um, I Okay, I've always been into, 
<laughs> the scenario of like, and this is not no like off the wall shit. I feel like a lot of people have this fantasy where, you know, you're just, you're at the doctor for a regular checkup. And then the nurse is like, okay, we're just going to have to see if your penis is operating the way it should, you know? And then like, mm, I'm just going to put my mouth on your penis just to see if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And, oh, oh my God, the nurse is giving me head. Oh, this is so hot. So nurses definitely turn me on, right? Mm. The whole nurse aspect is hot for classical, me. Classical, classical. Classical. Um, we've discussed this before. Um, the fucking massage that gets inappropriate, also very hot to me. Um, and, uh, and, oh, 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 this one too. This one too, right? It's after school. The janitor comes in. She has a very dirty mop bucket. She dumps the dirty water on your naked body. <laughs> no, no. I was like, where the fuck is this going? <laughs> no, no. I'm, oh, I'm, my I was, God. I was, I was, I was like, up. where the fuck is this weird shit going? She takes, the, she takes the mop. She starts putting it all over her body, right? And then, oh, bro, she gets the Clorox wipes. She's like, mmm, you look like a dirty boy. You know what I'm saying? Takes the Clorox wipe, shoves it up your asshole. <laughs> oh, then, then the cafeteria cook comes in. She's like, mmm, I made sloppy joes. I got leftover sloppy joe. Smears it all over her naked body, right? But let me tell you, she hasn't showered. So it's like, is this garlic in the sloppy joe? <laughs> <laughs> or is this B.O.? And then all of a sudden, bro, it's you, the janitor, the fucking cafeteria lady. You're having sex for 13 hours. <laughs> it's the best. But then like. Here's my scenario, dude. <laughs> so we're over here at a Trump rally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right? And this girl sees me walk by without a mask. And she's like. I'm going to kill you because <laughs> I believe in Asian hate. <laughs> and then I tell her, listen, that's morally wrong. <laughs> and then we sit down, we go for a coffee and I tell her about my culture. Oh. And then she's like, wow, I didn't know about Asian people. And then she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I wonder if Asian people's dicks are small. Yeah, and dude. I'm like, you know what? You want to prove that theory? Let's go to my hotel. Fuck yeah. So we get on a computer and we start Google searching different penises. Yeah. Right. And we look at it for six hours. Okay. And then I take her to a hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look, we can get surgery augmentation of my penis to make it bigger. Okay. And then, wow, then she looks at the surgery, gets all bloody. Then six years later, we're finally in a bedroom. And she's like, wow, mm -hmm. you have a big dick? I'm like, yeah. And I tell her, wow, I'm gay. And then she goes, I'm going to make you stop being gay. Oh. And then, wow. And I go, you know what? That's, that's not even real because gay is not a choice. And she goes, wow, really? And then I'm dead. Turn you on much? <laughs> I yeah. jizz like three times. <laughs> that's crazy. But it's almost as hot as this scenario. Check this <laughs> okay, out. Okay, check it out. Go but ahead. You're protesting the treatment of whales at SeaWorld. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. But, but you're protesting... And then, like, a fucking uh, a SeaWorld employee is like, the fuck is wrong with you? This is my job, dude. And then you fight. But you fight so hard, all your clothes come off, right? <laughs> so, so you and the SeaWorld employee, you're both naked, fighting, right? A fucking beautiful dolphin swims, jumps out of her tank because she sees you supporting her. She's like, okay. you're so hot. Thank you. Right? right? She fucking like starts gyrating her dolphin pussy in your face. And you're like, oh my God, I didn't know dolphin pussies were this beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Then she's like, which hole do you want? My pussy hole or my blow hole? Oh. And then you're like, wow. I've never felt blow hole before. And she's like, okay, that's cool, but I need that to breathe. So make it quick. And then. So it's like you're choking her. Wow. Because she likes to be dominated, but she also likes to not breathe a little bit, right? Wow. Um, so then, and then you fuck her blowhole and, um, and then, and then you have corn dogs afterwards. Wow, dude, that's so fucking hot. I'll raise you a scenario. <laughs> <laughs> it's 9-11. <laughs> I'm 
I'm kidding. <laughs> that, I'm kidding. I'm 100%. I'm 100% kidding. <laughs> well, um, I'm sure you guys got to go fucking change your underwear. 100%, dude. Because that, that shit got hot. We're doing an ASMR fucking <laughs> sex scenario channel after call. After this fucking podcast. Wow, that was so good. Dude's behind the gooch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but speaking of hot... Goody Brands collaboration with Howlin' Rays also dropped this shirt. It's a flip of the ACD album Highway to Hell. It's Nashville to Hell because it's a Nashville hot chicken sandwich. This is a flip of their album cover, which had Beelzebub on the back, but instead of Beelzebub, it's a fucking chicken. Wow. And we have these hats that say chicken head. Walk, walk, chicken head. So uh, make sure you check out goodybrand.com because we got that collab dropping with Howlin' Rays. Fire. Uh, Secret Society? Oh, uh, Secret Society is dropping our new uh, fall line. Amazing. We got... Dog, listen, it's very hard to make this stuff, right? But... Telling you, the colorways are fucking amazing. Uh, we got so, we got we got a knit sweater coming out. Ooh, we got cut so, and sew. Yeah, so our first pants that we ever released in our first launch sold out super fucking fast. But now we redid the specs. We redid the specs on the sweats. The fall line is going to be fire. I cannot wait to put my hands on it. The uh, the duffel backpack is back in stock. We only have a few left because like we sold like two hundred of it in the first day, but a few more left. Cop it, love it very much. We should get each other shit from our companies. Yeah, I don't know why I've never given you stuff. Yeah, I've never given you stuff. Yeah. I just realized that. <laughs> okay, that's the next move. Let's do that. Yeah. All right, y'all. Uh, go dry yourselves off. Uh, wipe your dicks and cooches off. And uh, thank you for watching and listening to another arousing episode of the No Chase. Oh, what is this? Dudes behind the food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, rate it five stars wherever you consume your podcast. And uh, I'm Tim Chathorosi. And I'm David So. Bye. Yo, it's the dudes.